Hey you guys, it's me Laura. I'm a homeschooling mom of three kids ages 4, 8, and 11 and today I'm going to share with you a little bit about what our plans are for the upcoming school year for 2022-2023 as well as kind of some changes that are going on with us. Now we start homeschool usually in June which I realize is not normal for most homeschoolers but we start our new school year technically in June and go through until the end of May and while I say technically is because there's no paperwork that I need to submit for my state I live in Idaho so it doesn't matter I don't even have to keep track of it but I do for my own personal records and we just go through each subject or each thing as my children go through them I don't care when in the year we start or finish and when we finish a level we either go on to the next level or look at a new curriculum and if something is not working I don't care what time it is of the year it is if we've put in a good faith faith effort and done everything we can we just drop it and start something new so we do technically have a school year but yeah so but we also do a four-day school week. and I'm just going to go through subject by subject and tell you what I'm doing for all three kids Technically, if they were in school, just to give you an idea, my 11 year old would be going into sixth grade, my eight year old is almost nine, he'd be going into fourth grade, and my four year old would be in pre-K. So that's kind of where we are at as far as level wise, but you'll see we've got things all over the board here because I just want them to be making progress at their own pace. So to start with, let's talk about language arts. So language arts, I have been doing Brave Writer kind of, um, read aloud based curriculum and that has been working well but my kids are just so different I can't group them together as much as I have in the past I have to start doing separate things for them so for my oldest we're going to continue doing all about spelling I'm not sure exactly what level he's going to land on because we have been using a lot of concepts from here but not necessarily going through it so I have to look and see what holes we have and fill those in and kind of work through and so I'm not sure exactly where he'll be but somewhere in level three four area and we're just going to keep going through that with him and I may try and do see if there's some easy tweaks that I can make to make this a little bit more engaging for him but overall this works very well and has helped him a lot and for his main literature um, our main language arts, I'm going to be using lightning literature for him this year. So I really like this because he is at a level where he's ready for some deeper, um, more in-depth stuff that his siblings are not ready for. So the readers that come with this, it's not, this is not meant to be his independent reading time because I really want that to be something that he chooses on his own. So he's still going to do his 20 minutes of independent reading for a book that he chooses every day. But these will be assigned with the program. If he really hates one, we'll just trade it out for something else. That's totally fine. But he can read this with me. I can read it to him. He can read it along with the audio if he wants to. He can read it by himself. He can do something different every day. I don't care. <laughs> but we're going to go through this. And I really want to focus on that critical thinking and engaging in the writing. And I love how this curriculum has those questions every day. And I think it will really get him thinking in that deeper way. For the grammar concepts and things like that, and literary concepts, we'll just talk about them together. I'm not concerned about mastery, but I think he's ready, certainly, to be going through that material. He is very advanced in this, um, and I think that he will be ready for that and doing well with that. And we're also going to be using this for the composition. We will not do all of the composition assignments in here, but I will pick out a few, and this will be a good way for us to build those writing skills, which he also needs. Now, lightning literature does come with sentence diagramming. I honestly don't know how that's going to go over for him. I could see it going either way. If it doesn't work out and he doesn't like it, we will just replace the sentence diagramming um, assignments with some light copy work. And I think that that will work really well for him. But I think this program is going to be really good. And I'm excited about having those conversations with him about some really good books. If you want to see inside this program, I'm happy to, to do that for you. Just let me know in the comments below. As far as my um, my fourth grader, he is working through the pinwheels from Rooted in Language. And so we're going to keep doing that. He's level three. I'm hoping that level four comes out by the time we get there. If not, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Um, I might just go ahead and jump to lightning literature. I'm not sure he'll be ready for that yet, but we'll see. We'll see what's kind of going on there. And I also use for him um, some... I've noticed that sometimes he just needs a change. He needs something a little different. And so we'll do a little bit of um, reading eggs or something like that every once in a while just to kind of give him a little change and give him a little break because what he's doing in pinwheels is very hard work for him. So he is, and he is doing amazing. 
Um, so that is kind of what he's doing. And also I have him choose a book that he loves. And so he'll listen to the audiobook and follow along with a physical book um, at his pace. And then for my little one, she is doing Pinwheels 1 from Rooted in Language. And we're going through it really, really slow at her pace. And that seems to be working super well. So as far as language art, that is what we have going on there. Um, then moving on to math, math, nothing is really changing. We're doing math on the level with Samuel. That is working really well. And I have videos all about that that I can leave below or in the card or wherever. And for Timothy, we're continuing with math lessons for a living education. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So we're just continuing with that. And um, with Lily, she, I had a, a fantastic preschool program that I got for her. It's just a little book. It was not very expensive, but she knows all of that already. So I'm going to go ahead and start her with some math on the level stuff. And it's just going to be games and fun and easy for her. We are doing a lot of game-based, play-based learning um, with a few worksheets here and there. And she's doing really well with that. So we're just going to keep, keep doing that as well. Oh, and also for Lily for language arts, I do have some, I got a download from the Crafty Classroom with a lot of fun worksheets and activities that I'm using along with, with pinwheels. She really enjoys those and that extra reinforcement and practice is good for her at her age. We read tons of books all the time, just the, the two of us, and my husband reads to her and so that's also part of her, um, her pre-K there. For handwriting, for both boys, we're doing handwriting without tears. I like their very simple approach to cursive, and the boys can get the very basics of the shape and figure out what loops work best for them and what don't, and it's a very easy um, format and way to learn cursive. So that is what we're continuing to do with them. I am focusing for both of them on some mindfulness and learning a little bit more about self-regulation and calming and executive functioning and these skills as they're appropriate for each child. So we're making space for that in their own ways that work for them. Some of it's workbook based. Some of it is I have little stories with activities to do. Some of it is getting some really great books from the library that talk about these things and reading the stories and talking about the stories together. And there's just a lot of different stuff that I have going on with that as well. I am also trying to include a few extras for each of them this year. So Samuel has been begging me to learn Spanish. So there's a subscription kit and I forget what it's called. I'm going to link it below and I'm not 100% sure I'm going with it yet, but it's a steam based kit, which this is my science loving child, but it comes in Spanish, like it's bilingual. And there's also an opportunity for him to meet with other students and share his project and talk about what they're learning in Spanish. And there's a lot of um, interactive component to it, but I just love that it's science in Spanish. Like I feel like you can't really get a better fit for him. So I'm gonna look a little bit more into that. And I think that's what we're gonna do for Spanish and I'll work on him with it every day. And for Timothy, he really wants to do art. So I'm looking at DIY.com, I think, or DIYKids.com. Again, I'll put links to all of this below. But it um, has some animation classes and some art classes that I think are going to be a good fit for him. The last thing is our science, history, um, geography, loop kind of subject. So I had been writing very large unit studies, very intensive unit studies. And we're still kind of going in the same idea, but things are changing up a bit. So each unit is going to consist of only two things. So that is a read aloud that goes really well with the unit. And then some kind of nonfiction spine. I'm not being as precise about about what they are and how, how, they're, how they're going to be basically. So if we move quickly through the read aloud, that's fine. If we move slowly through the read aloud, that's fine. I will kind of have a goal schedule for getting through the nonfiction stuff, but those are kind of the main components. So it's not really a full unit study. As activities come up, as opportunities arrive, we'll still be adding things to our timeline binder. We might be drawing pictures or doing experiments, but I'm not going to schedule it all out exactly ahead of time. I might flag a few things that look interesting, but we're kind of going to go with the flow a little bit. We also still have Book Basket, but Book Basket is changing some. So while I will definitely in our Book Basket be including things that have to do with what we're learning in our read aloud or the topic that the nonfiction is covering that goes with it, I'm branching out some more. And if there are other things that they're interested in, even if they have absolutely nothing to do with our unit, I'm popping them in there because they're usually 
have something to do with history or science or something to learn. And so I'm kind of incorporating a little bit more. And when we do our book basket, I'm reserving some time for us to look up videos or to try things or do things with what we're learning to expand on what they're naturally curious about. And so that is kind of what our unit studies are morphing into. So it's kind of a backwards planning with it, but I find that they just do really well and we learn so much that way. So that is what we are doing. I know this year, right now, we just started a World War One unit. We're reading War Horse and Hero over here. We're going through one of these books for World War II along with it. I mean, World War One along with it. And we're going to be, we've done some map work and there's some projects we might do. Um, this comes with a lot of project ideas and I'm sure the boys will have more ideas. And so um, every once in a while we'll watch a documentary or just kind of follow where the questions lead. And again, I do have books that I've picked out for our book basket. There's other things in there too, but there's lots of stuff related to World War One, animals in war, all kinds of things like that as well. So we will be doing that. We will be doing a gardening unit. We will be doing the Great Depression this year. We will be doing World War II this year. We're going to be doing a um, survival slash birds of prey unit. It's going to be based on the my side of the mountain. I haven't gotten any farther than that, but those are kind of what we have slated for this year. So I have a big list of stuff that I'm kind of working on and working through. And as I find good resources, I'll plug them in and we'll do those as well. And that is pretty much, oh, the other big thing that I would like to try to do, and I haven't completely figured this out 100%, but I want to be working with them on cooking more. They're interested in cooking. I think I want them to really know how to cook on their own. I think it's an important skill. And I am really bad at cooking with other people. It has nothing to do with my kids, has nothing to do with other people. When I'm cooking, I'm in the zone. And that is kind of part of my me time. I really don't like having other people in the kitchen. I know that that's not a very, homeschooly mom thing to do. You're supposed to have your kids in there working with you, but I'm just bad at it. I'm just bad at it and that's okay. So I want to do better. So what I'm thinking of doing is rotating them. So I'll do make one day a week be my day that I'm cooking with the kids and it'll be Samuel, then Timothy, then Lily, and then it will rotate back around. Um, so I'll have them pick a recipe to work on on Monday or Tuesday and we'll figure out the list that we need and put in our grocery order for when we go to town on Wednesday and then on Thursday that child will make the meal with me. I'm looking at something like Radish Kits um, which is a subscription kit. I like that they have picture-based recipes. We have some, we're vegetarian and I'm allergic to milk. The dairy stuff is pretty easy to move around but the meat can be difficult especially since not all of my children like the meat substitutions. So I'm trying to see the best way to tackle that. I do like Radish Kids. I like that Radish Kids also teaches about different skills in the kitchen and things like that, but it is kind of pricey and I'm just not sure. So I'm trying to figure out the best way to implement that, but that is my plan and I think the kids will be will do well with that. They tend to complain when I try to pull them into the kitchen because they'd rather play, but I think if I get on this schedule and make it just be a part of our homeschool and a part of our lives, I think they'll do totally fine with it and I think they'll actually enjoy it because they do like being in the kitchen they just don't like having to follow the rules which you know I don't follow the directions when I cook so you know who knows but it'd be great for them to have some recipes and to know how, how to work in those ways so I want to make time for that the last thing I don't know that I mentioned is for Lily I do have for her pre-k a big part of it is we play we do lots of play and I have a bookshelf set up for her in our library and it has things in it like a sensory bin. I usually have everything we need for an art project. Um, I'll tr usually try to do some puzzles or some games that are either literacy-based games or math-based games or logic-based games or things like that. And we'll usually have um, some fine motor skill stuff and just there's six shelves. So I'll have different activities out for her and I'll rotate those out. And that's just something we can play and do together, but it is also educational and she's learning at the same time. That is pretty much it for this year. That's what we have going. It sounds like a lot, but it's actually really simple and it does not take us long to get through all of this. There's a lot of literature-based learning because we have our book basket, we have our um, read aloud that we're doing together with Samuel's curriculum for language arts. He's gonna have his books that he's going through. And there's just a lot of that. 
and not as much book like workbook based learning but that's what works for our family so I think that this is going to be good I think this year is going to be a simplified year for all of us but I think that that's kind of what we need right now let me know if you have any questions I know there's a couple requests for videos to do and I'm going to try to get those done um, making videos is not my top priority right now but I do want to start making videos again for you guys and I appreciate your patience as I kind of take this break. I hope you guys are enjoying the spring weather. I hope you're getting spring weather where you are and I hope that you have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you later. Bye. I know that you guys are going to ask. This is a yoga sling. That's what this is called. I use it to do some yoga on. I know I'm going to get questions about it. So yeah, that's what that is. And I'll put a link so that you can see what this is all about.